everybody, Adam at Develop PHP here, and in this very short series, we're going to be learning how to create this real-time Flash ActionScript 3 chat application. It's like a chat box for your website visitors, and we're going to make. You can see mine is uh, member-based because I have a custom member system, but I'm going to make this tutorial universal to where anybody can chat in your application, and we'll just put a little field down here that says name. They put their name in there, and they press chat. They write in what they want to chat, press chat, their name shows up, and their chat shows up. Okay, so in part one here, we're going to be discussing the chat application's programming logic, because a lot of new guys don't really understand the data flow that happens within a dynamic application like this. So I'm going to go over all of that in depth, and then we're going to create the MySQL database table that we need that's going to store all of the chats and the person's name and things like that everybody's chats will be stored in there that way we can render out a big window full of everybody's chats okay this illustration here has four boxes up top and then one big box on the bottom and these four boxes up top I'm gonna to show the tutorial layout that's how our tutorial is gonna flow and then this box here on the bottom this large box on the bottom shows the applications data flow how information and data that people type in is gonna flow and get stored and come back and get rendered and everything like that so part one of the tutorial uh, layout is going to be we're going to create the MySQL database table and set the fields we need inside of it for storing all the chats. Part two is going to be creating input form elements and a chat display window in Flash. It's going to be one application that does all of it. And then part three, we're going to create the parse file that is going to be the middleman sort of between Flash and MySQL server. So if actually if ActionScript 3 had direct functions for communicating with the MySQL server we wouldn't even need PHP in this instance but since uh, there's no comprehensive set of MySQL functions native in Flash ActionScript 3 we have to use PHP as a middleman. So PHP is going to be the guy that kind of transfers data in between the two applications. MySQL Server, which is the database, and Flash, which is the input and viewing device. Okay, so now in part four, we're going to upload all the files to the server and test everything out, and then we're done. So I think there's going to be four parts to this. Let's take a look at the application data flow here at the bottom. So the first thing that happens is flash has timer functions and we can make flash check for new chat posts at any interval we like 30 seconds five seconds one second if you want and what it can do is send a call out to PHP file that will check to see if any new data has been posted to the database the chat database or the chat table since the last post and if it has we're going to render out all that data to the uh, display window that way everybody sees the newest data and so what it does is if it finds the newest post it repopulates the chat window with the new data this is needed so everybody chatting sees the most up-to-date data in the chat window and not just the chatter so if you made it to where just the guy chatting saw the newest updated data that wouldn't work we needed to to be for a, you know, if 10,000 people are watching the chat it needs to update for them too so that's why I built the timer into it and I set mine for five seconds you can set yours for any amount you want if you want to save bandwidth you can set it for 30 seconds or whatever you want to do um, I, I find that it doesn't have a huge bandwidth drain on my site so I let it go at five seconds so every five seconds anybody in the world watching it will see updated data in the chat window here so when Johnny comes what he's gonna do say this is Johnny he is going to type his name into this field and we're going to script our flash application to sense whether or not that field is empty or not if he didn't put his name in he won't be able to chat so we'll make sure the flash application is programmed to sense whether or not that name field is empty or not so what it'll do is he'll put his name in and then he'll put in his chat whatever he wants to chat to people or on the site and then he'll press submit and then there's two variables that get sent via post variables via the post mechanism to the PHP file and that is the name and the chat in his case it's Johnny 
and hello everybody. So once the PHP file picks up those two posted variables, we have them and we can work with them. We also grab the user's IP address so you can write IP block mechanisms. So in case anybody gets annoying, you can just go into your database, see who the annoying guy's IP address was, and then we can write a block mechanism. I might show you how to do that. It's only like three lines of code. That way an annoying chatter can't chat. Okay, so user IP, the name, the chat, and the date time will be sent to our MySQL database table for storage and display. And then the cycle, once uh, MySQL gets the new uh, chat data from the latest chatter, the cycle loops over and over, continuing new post checks every 5 seconds or 30 seconds, whatever you set it as. Okay. So now let's go ahead and get on to step one here and create this MySQL database table needed that will have the fields required to store all this, all the little pieces of data that our application requires. Okay. Okay, so this file automates the table creation process for us so you guys can start thinking a little more dynamic in your scripts and your applications. Or you can choose to not use this method and go straight into PHP My Admin and create this table called chats and put all these fields into it manually. So the first line of code in this script is require once the file which is named connect to mysql.php require once or require which is written like this or include which is written like this are all kind of similar to where they will bring in script and another files code into the current one you're working in now I use this method this way if I have 20 different uh, PHP scripts that all need the connection data in them I don't have to write the connection data directly into the tops of all the uh, all those files I can just sync in this one line that way if I ever need to change my connection data I have to move my database or something I don't have to go into all 20 of those files and change the connection data I can do it in one file and all of them will be affected that's why this method is handy okay so in line 6 here we create a string variable this string is responsible right here this string is responsible for creating the table within our database when it gets fed into this MySQL query function here okay so in this string we set the ID field to be auto increment not null which means not empty it cannot be empty and it has an integer value which is has a max of 11 so the ID field this will keep auto incrementing so every chat the first person that chats, that's chat1, has ID of 1. The second person that chats in your application, that has a chat ID of 2, so on and so forth. The user IP will be the person who chatted's IP address, and that's a varchar field 255 set to not null as well. It must not be empty. User name field is the person's name who's chatting. It's varchar255, which is, uh, it could be any kind of characters, any kind of string with a value of 255 no more characters than 255 and that is not null as well cannot be empty the chat body <coughs> can be empty or you can set it to not null if you want and that's a text type uh, field so a text type field can hold a lot more than 255 characters if you want to set it to where it can only hold 255 in each little chat then set this to varchar 255 as well the date time is set to a date time type and that is null so that can be empty or you can set that to not null as well because it's always going to be sent in regardless so you can set that to null or not null and it'll still work but this has a date time type the date time uh, field is set to date time type and the primary key on this table is the ID field so what we do here is we sync in the MySQL query into this query result variable. So we create a new variable called query result. And we run the MySQL query using this SQL string we created here. Now the result, it runs the, the code at this point right here and the table is created if everything goes right. So here we set up an if condition to see if everything went right. 
if the query result is explicitly true then we print out success in table creation happy coding else no table created check your syntax and SQL string structure and then we close the MySQL connection and that's pretty much how it works okay so I just FTP this exact file to my server I'm gonna run it now in a browser to see if it creates a table for us and we're looking for a table called chats to be created I'm gonna go into Safari here and I'm gonna put my address to the file into the browser uh, address bar press enter success in table creation happy coding so if there was any problem with anything I wouldn't get this message here so I'm gonna go into the database and make sure that that table was created in PHP my admin I'm gonna go which you could use PHP my admin you can go straight in and just make that table manually like I said so let's give it a check let's press uh, to refresh this list here and see if it showed up a table called chats and there it is there's the chats table let's hit the structure take a look at what's in it user IP field user name field chat body date time you can't browse it because it's empty there's no entries in it yet okay so we'll uh, we'll keep going in part two we'll create the input form in flash we'll get the flash side of things going and then we'll create the PHP parse file in part three and then part four we'll test the whole application out make sure everything's working smooth okay so make sure you catch part two and I'll put a link to it right here bye bye buddies We'll see you guys next time.